Uh, we are in the car on the, well we're not quite on the QEW but we almost are. And uh, it's raining which... It's raining! It's not done for a while but it's uh, proper raining actually. So yeah, sorry it's if it's a bit noisy. It was, it got pretty grim pretty quick today and we outsmarted the weather though, didn't we, Jamie we, Darling? We did. <laughs> um, yeah, weather forecast was snow and rain and all sorts of horrible things and we couldn't get out yesterday because we were waiting around for people and then it didn't do that, it was all sunny until lunchtime so we, thanks to you, got out we pitter pot pitter patter, let's get at her. Um, <laughs> and uh, we learned, or I learned, that not maintaining my dropper paste, which I normally do, is not a good thing because then it just stops working or works very slowly, which is okay. really annoying. Actually, that would be a good thing for you to explain. How did it get to that state? Uh, so, I have a six or seven year old dropper post in a two year old mountain bike and a lot of people would say why didn't you swap the dropper post but they're all pretty much the same. And it came on a Mundraker a long time ago and I happen to like it and it's normally fairly reliable but what happens over time is that the um, the canister that's in it, which is the thing that pushes the post up when you squeeze the lever, just wears out and I should have replaced it a year ago and I didn't and I've been doing the, the Gorilla Fix which is undo the bolt, on, undo the collar and use a suspension loop and then push the thing up and down a few times and then it pulls out like a little plastic sleeve clean all the grit off, put it back together and then get another month or two out of it and I've been doing that quite a lot and then I know the gas canister or the canisters had it and I've just been trying to get to the end of the season because it's one of those things that I'll just replace next year um, but my temporary fixes didn't work and then all the mud got in the seal and then the seal did something weird and then it just stopped working so I had to I took it all apart when we got back, so now I will do an hour's work on it next weekend and it will probably work fine, but yeah. Um, if you are going to bodge things, like I do sometimes, then it's just remembering to keep on top of it. So. Right, so I just, to be, I thought it was something to do with a bearing. Like oh, and then on top of that, I have a creak in my suspension on my mountain bike which has been happening since we went to Sault Ste. Marie and that is because one of the bearings needs replacing and they took it out and re-greased it but I didn't want to order a new one because I mean they're not that expensive but they're expensive enough and again I just wanted to get it to the end of the year because I didn't want to put new bearings in it and then leave it in a cold damp garage all over the winter I thought I'll put new bearings in in the spring, ready for the spring riding. But because we're still riding, and there's no snow yet, so we're not on fat bikes, I'm still riding it, and what's happened is I took it all out and greased it and cleaned it, and then I rode it, and I washed it, and then put it away, and I didn't use a... I didn't check the bearings, so then what's happened is it's dried out, I think, and that's why it was creaking today so um, and then because that one has gone I probably need to replace all of them so they'll all be at the end of their natural two year life or whatever so. so just a few words of wisdom I guess that things have gotten pretty busy for us and so of course some things fall by the wayside and uh that was a little bit unfortunate today. I guess the words of wisdom that I was always told are, at the minimum, when you've been for a ride, wipe the suspension down and clean the drivetrain with a brush to get all the muck off of it. Um, then you know, 
dry the chain. If anything's wet, make sure it's dry. If anything's loose, brush it off. We now have an air compressor, so you can blow all the all the muck out of the drivetrain and everything, and then re-oil it. You don't need to wash the bike frames because that is what it is. And actually, if you keep washing them all the time, you can often do more harm than good because you wash all the grease out the bearings and out the suspension and damage the seals. And but you know, once every month or so, give it a good clean. But just never put it away wet, never put it away with mud on any of the moving parts, I guess, is the thing I was told, so, yeah, and I, last time I rode, I did not follow that rule, because I was in a rush, and no excuse, but I put it away, not as clean as it should have been, and then it dried out, and I didn't check it, we took it today, it normally works, and it didn't, so, <laughs> that's it. Yes, so, moral of the story is, don't put your bike stay on top of things because in the long run it makes your future self will thank you. Yeah and I have a I mean I have a spreadsheet on my telephone but I used to have a whiteboard in my workshop garage area but what I tend to do is when I know things are wearing out so like I know I need a new set of bearings I know I need to get a new seal for the dropper base I know your bike needs a new chain, like I just write a shopping list and then when something goes on sale or if I see something that there's a good deal for what I need then I'll, that's what I tend to buy it. And so actually, um, I, were you saying that you were maybe going to do a either podcast or even a video on a little bit of maintenance or like yeah. basic cleaning? Yeah, I was going to do a few videos on a review I've got to do on a bike and then I was going to do some kind of basic how to look after your bike. Well, what to do before you go for a ride, what you do when you come out for a ride, and what to kind of do once a month or so. Probably. Yeah, so maybe those could be coming this over the winter. Um, stay tuned for, for that information. Yeah. But anyways, that was just something I wanted to share a little bit about today because it was a bit frustrating for you. A little bit. Um, and you are super disciplined with being on top of it. Um, and you enjoy it as well. Yeah, I do actually. It's uh, but, different from what I do for a day job. So it's actually something I can do, which, you know, where you can see the results of what you've done, if that makes sense. Definitely. But as we said, we have been quite busy and there are only so many hours in a day that... Never mind. Moving on. So we went and did a bit more of the Bruce Trail today, so we ended up at Fireman's Park, um, but we started at, can you remember the name of the wood we started? That's what I was just about to ask you. Um, it's just north of Niagara. So we ended up at Fireman's Park today and we rode the Bruce Trail to get there. We parked near Niagara, and I'll put a link in the description below for where we parked, but it basically is just following the Bruce Trail, and then we did a couple of the side trails as well, and we found quite a nice ride, didn't we, actually? Quite. Some, some sections we had been on before, but where we started out from... That was one of my favourite sections. It was quite magical. It is all managed by Walker Industries, who I think managed the uh, the dump, the refuse tip that's next to it. But they also manage this beautiful, like, well-managed, well-maintained woodland that the Bruce Trail runs through. Yeah, even, like, it, the trails were a little bit on the wider side, but definitely some tricky bits, and... That beautiful Bruce rock with the moss on it, um, some good elevation. Yeah, so we we rode uh, through there and then we kind of picked our way under the screaming tunnel, which you do not like, do you? Oh no, I had to sing a song to get myself out of it. It's so creepy and I don't like those riding on those loose, large rocks where you're just kind of wobbling around and very, it feels very out of control. So we 
you have to go under the railway, basically, which my, we did. My tip is to sing a song if you're feeling <laughs> feeling not thrilled about going through it. It helped. Should have recorded the song. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then we picked our way through the woods to Fireman's Park. We did notice, and actually, not that I'm going to rush to play it, but we were quite impressed with the Frisbee golf course that we saw, weren't we? Yeah, I had no idea. I thought they were normally just out on like kind of open fields like a regular sort of golf course. But no, no, this one was like mountain bike style frisbee golf. It was through the woods with cool features, up and down, bridges. Lots of trees to try and get through. Yeah. I did watch some dude warming up. That was quite, I mean, I'm not knocking a sport, but it did amuse me his maneuvers he was the doing moves. his false throws which makes sense because he probably hurt your shoulder but it did just look a little bit strange when he was stood silhouetted on the top of the hill doing his practice swings. well i would say he's probably pretty clever actually yeah i guess but it just for me he just stood there looking i was like whoa yeah i guess we did not know the moves but no. yeah that that golf course that frisbee golf course was like off roping frisbee golf course <laughs> Also, they run in to throw it as well, which I'd trip over, I think. <laughs> like, I think I could... St I used The last time I threw a frisbee was for my dog. Um, but, I, yeah, I was watching the moves. Like, they run up to it and do it. I, um... Anyway, I was just intrigued. You won't be doing that with your little... little injury at the minute, but... Well, you never know. No, I mean right now, running up and doing the old throw. Oh, I'm still saying you never know. <laughs> Some of my moves going up those muddy hills in that boot. Jeez Louise. Yeah, we need to screw some feet in the bottom of it, don't we? Some kind of, like, ice Crampons. picks. There you go. <clears throat> it's really hard to... If I can't get up a hill and I have to walk and it's mud straight up and there's no roots or rocks to get any traction on, that boot is not meant for mountain climbing, let me just tell you, or mud climbing. So the trail today was quite interesting because um, certainly the start was like through these woods with these lovely rock up, rock up steps, rock steps. Um, and then we kind of came across this little ravine area, didn't we, that was kind of quite interesting. Is that the one where the, um, the dirt bikes were last time? We no, there? I was the one I liked was the first one we stopped at where we took the picture, the oh, very right, first right. one. Um, where I said that would be a great camping spot. Yeah. Uh, yes. And then the second one, when we got on the Bruce Trail proper, that's where the dirt bikes were, where those steps were. Yes. Um, and I tried to ride down the steps, but they're too... They were quite steep and just weirdly placed, so... I mean, I probably could I probably could do it in the right frame of mind or in the drive, but it was definitely going to end badly, I think. When you I made it so. halfway. Yeah. And then I could tell you made a good decision. I was like, you know what, this isn't going to go well. Um, I, I was did. getting bucked around, which I don't normally do, but I was, yeah. Um, but it was pretty muddy today, wasn't it? Yeah, but, and to, I don't, I'm not sure when the last time it rained. Like, it was otherwise relatively dry, but there was some, some bits were, yeah, muddier than it looked. There was no hero dirt today, just slop that was sticking to your tyres and then you'd suddenly get these like fine gravelly bits and then the gravel would stick to the tyres and then it just hits the mud guard or the fender as you call it. Um, or your frame so it's just like a tinkling noise which is a bit weird. So. Um, we did not do so well on the mushrooms today then did we? No and I'm quite surprised and baffled yet again. The Bruce, uh, I don't know if they're and I think I've said this before, if there's other seasons where other types of mushrooms are plentiful, um, and but today, absolutely nothing. And I full well expected or was kind of looking for either oyster mushrooms or lion's mane. And I mean, I, the environment certainly looked inviting for those fellers, but I saw none. I mean, there was a lot of oak trees. Yeah. Um, a lot of standing dead wood or whatever it is. 
Yeah, standing dead wood down, dead like wood. dead logs, like tons. But. And this isn't a new phenomenon for us. We've spent a lot of time on and off the Bruce Trail at various places, all the way up the Niagara Escarpment. And apart from once, it's always been a bit lacking in mushrooms, hasn't it? Compared to other places we go, it would appear. Yeah, and that's what I was sort of trying to maybe poorly say at the beginning uh, of my rant here, is that I don't know if it's just the seasons that we've been found ourselves there in or you know just even down to the days and the the temperatures or or rain or lack of rain in the previous week like maybe i mean it's just I mean, it does seem to that we go to other places and find at least something even remnants of things whereas i struggle i mean i guess when I rode on that other bit of the Bruce the weekend before last, I did see some, well, I saw three old pheasant bags, like three. So that isn't anything to write home about, is it really? No, but it's at least evidence that there is that they are there, right? Yeah. Uh, there's some hope. There was no hope on the, on the fungi front today. But even the other bits of the Bruce we went on, like the bit that's getting closer to Short Hills, we've looked and not seen... We do seem to strike out on the on the mushroom front, but we will continue to hunt, and I'm sure eventually we will either be successful or learn some more things along the way about as to why. Or Maybe I'm we'll, sure we'll we'll gather some more yeah, information, so. if not mushrooms. <laughs> I think it will be fine as well. I think it's just learning a new area, and like you said, maybe just the days we happen to find ourselves there is we miss it or maybe there's more rigorous foragers on the Bruce Trail than we realise and they're snaffling beating us snaffling um yeah well really the only thing that I saw today was a really nice uh, autumn olive berry bush and I did have some pretty serious handfuls of those beauties they were almost overripe and I hadn't experienced them in this state uh, just yet and I've had them like super underripe pretty underripe probably just ripe enough but never overripe like this and they were like they just come off in the handful and they're almost like jam they were they were quite different than um, in other states that I have enjoyed them in and we had nothing to carry them today so I just yeah enjoyed stuffing my face with them they would make a good chutney with cheese wouldn't they they would oh Jamie darling you're onto something just that you know especially as a, I mean maybe we need to uh, hop to it next weekend and get some I think you might be onto but something like with a nice strong cheddar or something Maybe you're going to be a guest, a guest cook on the old edible site Maybe. there. Yeah, stop by and have a look at that if you get a chance. The uh, the website, the recipes, it's uh, there's a good selection up there now, and uh, it's starting to get a bit of a following. Woo! <laughs> Any other edible stuff you spotted today? Well, I heard you saying buckthorn, which is <laughs> something that you often say. In I'm the always background. spotting the buck thorn berries um but no the only other thing that i made you take a photograph of and i have oh, some yeah. investigating to do and i have no i mean it can't be the season for it but who the heck knows we were picking nettles like not too many weeks ago but i wonder if that black tube was like a little microclimate because it will get hot because of the sun maybe. like a weird little greenhouse marsh house yeah maybe so anyways Plastic dust, I mean, you know. Yeah, and weird, gooey, creaky water. But anyways, what we are speaking about here that we <laughs> are wondering if it was watercress. So. Yeah, it could be. I mean, we'll check. I We took pictures, but we didn't look it up at the time. So we will do some research. Okay. Um, I would have thought that watercress would have appeared more in like a springtime than a well, I, I almost winter time. 
but I also would have thought it would have gone for like super fresh, clear, like flowing water, but that was stagnant, smelly. It was fairly clear though. I guess, but it was a bit drainage ditchy, wasn't it? It, it was, was kind but of running out of that field. So. Yeah, maybe it was just some weird little greenhouse thing. Like you said, it was in a little bit of a hot, hot patch there. Good old microclimate. So that was that, I would say, on the old wild edibles today. Just one feast of very ripe autumn olive berries. And then on a slightly different note, you did order, order, order orderly, organize. You did organize the, uh, the pantry of mushrooms. Yes, we shape. have, I would say we have transported all of our dehydrated precious cargo of mushrooms precious cargo good one um of yes all of our mushroom collection from previous house which we like to call the rat hole to new house which and we haven't called anything yet no not yet i'm sure we'll come up with a good name for it for her um but anyways yes i now have an entire cupboard pantry full of mushrooms that we have identified, like learned about and identified and collected and preserved. It's quite impressive and quite uh, satisfying. A whole pantry, guys. Yeah, it's a big old stock of them there, so. Yeah, there's probably about 10 different kinds of mushrooms. Yeah, it's impressive when you look at it. When you look back on, you know, all the associated trips that have gone with them. Yeah. Hopefully everybody else is going to get into this now. I guess one thing you could do through the winter is maybe talk a bit about the preserving process we go through. Maybe that could be a little video. Maybe. The old clean and dehydrate and all of that. Yeah, well each one can be quite different on the cleaning, uh, my cleaning moves, but yeah, for sure. We could do a time lapse of you dehydrating them. Set up a little tiny camera well, you know, inside the, the yeah. inside the dehydrator. <laughs> that was the water being sucked out of them. Them shriveling up. I don't know. There might be something we can do with that, but yeah, we will we will see. Um, and then we guess we're just getting ready for snow and fat bike season slowly. So uh, I, on the subject of bike maintenance, that's my next task is. Actually, Jessica's is fine, because Jessica got a brand new frame at the end of last season. This is fat bikes, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yes. Um, so yours, because you had that weird thing with the Defective bolts. Defective bolts. So they warranted, Rocky Mountain just changed the frame out, so then it was rebuilt. And I put a dropper post on it for you, so that you don't uh, topple over with your foot. Is that a huge fire on there? Could be. Or is it just an orange light? light? I don't know. It looks quite smoky. Anyways. Um, sorry. So, yeah, I just need to do some fat bike maintenance and uh, get them ready. They're weird when you shift from normal mountain bikes to those. Like, everything is bigger and wider and, like, the gear shifting's a bit more difficult. So, anyway, there's a lot of... There's, there's a fair bit of setup work to do, so I will get on with that. I feel like I'm driving a monster truck and like in a cartoon video game or something when I get on that beast. We need to learn, uh, we need to learn the groomed trails, don't we? Yes, we do. Well, anything else, Jamie Darling? I don't think so. We, uh, also we might, over the next little bit or so, we might try and record these from home rather than in the car because we're going to be, um, riding and then at home a bit more um, we won't have the long journeys soon so we all the last one the, the one in the Don Valley we recorded at home and people liked the fact it was easier to hear so we, we'll see we might we're not never going to do them in the car but we might do a few more home ones I think um, what do you think yeah I think right now we're just squeezing things in wherever and however we can yeah my three our three fans were quite upset when we didn't record. Um, Which is quite sweet. So I'm sticking to the schedule, so I apologise if the sound quality is a bit rainy as we're driving on the wet highway. But A bit rainy, 
rubbish. Just want to keep everybody happy, well, all three of you, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. Get lost.